All right, um, we've now completed our courses. We are now at the end of the lecture period. Um, let's have a look how, it, how everything goes there. Um, you can see we have completed prerequisites, um, and now we need to write lists for four exams so that we can take part in them. Um, still, the most important examination type is the so-called written exam. It is a 90 to 240 minutes long exam, and uh, you may um, or may not have to uh, complete some prerequisites, as mentioned before in the module description, so that you can uh, take part in the exam. Um, for example, in machine learning one, you have to take part um, uh, in, in homework as, as a group exercise. You have to, to hand them in every one or two weeks, and then you'll earn points in order to be able to uh, take part in the exam. Important with written exams is that registration um, has to be done until one week before the exam. Um, this is a hard deadline. Uh, you cannot uh, register after that. So yeah, just register as early as possible because you can deregister from, uh, from, from your registration. You can deregister from, deregister from the exam. This is possible until three days before the exam. Um, be aware that this has changed in the last year, this the second uh, time frame it, uh, previously was one day before the exam. Um, you may or may not find this old um, uh, period in some places, so be aware that <laughs> it's now three days and um, this old uh, period doesn't work. If your exam happens to be online, um, this can happen. It probably will happen uh, much uh, more rarely this semester. Um, when it's done online, it's uh, an open or a closed book exam. Um, open book means yeah, you can um, use every material you have, um, but you cannot talk to your fellow students, obviously. Um, in closed closed book exam, you only have like your m maybe one one sheet of paper that you've written something down, um, but mainly you have your own um, yeah what, what you've remembered before. Um, and this matters for, for this especially, but also in general. If something looks fishy, then tell us, because it's probably fishy. So um, yeah, feel free to, uh, to reach out to us and tell us if you think something is not the, the way it should be. Uh, and by the way, if you happen to um, want to learn for, for the exam, which probably is a good idea, then you can use our Exam collection that has um, a couple of or, or that has exams for a couple of hundred of hundred of modules um, and exams, so you can use it to to get an impression on what your exam will look like. If you want to take part in an exam but then get sick um, just before the exam um, has uh, started. Um, then you're not out of luck. You can hand in a, a sick note or a doctor's note. Um, this has to be done, or th this uh, sick note has to be um, issued on the day of the exam or earlier. Um, and if issued earlier, then it has to extend until at least the day of the exam. And you have to hand it in at the examination office until five days after the exam. So this is very, very important. Um, um, if um, your attempt is open, for example, because it's a portfolio examination, this also uh, um, counts for towards a po of portfolio examinations, um, the part partial assignments that we've talked about earlier, then um, your open attempt uh, has to be continued, um, possibly already on the next um, exam day. We'll talk about that later. There are multiple exam um, exam dates, uh, th they have to be offered usually. Um, this um, th this uh, regulation regarding your signal doesn't only count to towards signals, but also other um, forms of yeah ab absent that you're not that which is not your full fault. For example, if you have a court appointment. If um, you or your partner um, goes into labor, if you marry um, your, your next relatives, or 
if somebody near you um, um, unfortunately dies, then this also can count towards a valid reason that you don't have to take part in an exam. Be aware of that. Um, but if you happen to um, actually uh, take part in the exam and you get a grade, uh, then you might uh, might want to, to download it to um, show it to an employer or something. And this is where you have to view your transcript of records. This is done um, via KISPOS, which you can find in the TU Berlin portal. Um, then you log in, go to the exams tile, um, and there you can find the um, there you can find your transcript records. KISPOS was formerly use, also used for exam registrations and read registrations. Um, it is not used for this purpose uh, right now. Probably won't ever be used again for this purpose. Um, uh, the, you register right now for exams using the MTS exams tab as talked about in the previous video. Um, and then after the exam is done, um, you'll, you have to be able to uh, uh, look into it. There, is a, there needs to be an exam inspection. Um, you can look um, through your exam, see whether um, everything was correct. Um, um, especially this is cool if you uh, unfortunately failed, then you can see um, yeah, whether um, w what you did wrong and uh, yeah, at best avoid um, repeat mistakes in future attempts. Um, yeah, you should always go there. It's, it's really the one of the best features um, that you can look into your exams and um, also talk to the professors and examiners about what you did wrong and maybe even get some more points. Um, if there are any issues with the inspection, there's also the formal inspection called the reconsideration procedure um, where you uh, file a motion to the examination board and then um, they forward it to the examiner and then you'll um, receive a so at some point in the future you receive a response from the examiner whether he has given you points or not. Um, this is more, yeah, ha um, you may or may not need it. Usually you don't, um, but have, have this in mind. Um, it might come in handy. Uh, you can find more about this in our Uni ABC, um, our neat little bu booklet uh, that you can find online. Um, yeah, maybe have a look right there. Uh, grades, by the way, um, are awarded on a scale from one to five, um, with actually a lot of steps in between. So 1.0, 1.3, 1.7, 1.2, 2.0, 2.3, .2 and so on and so forth. Um, the conversion is done by a grading key. Uh, this depends on the exam type. Um, you should uh, have a look into the module description in order to see your grading key and um, also whether the module is even graded or not. And then um, we have the second exam term. Um, this is usually used for uh, exam resets or if you were sick before, then you can go there and Mm, yeah, you can sometimes even choose whether to take the first or the second exam um, of, of the semester. Um, yeah, let's have a look in, in what the examiner offers, but usually there has to be two exams um, or two exam dates uh, for you to, to choose from. Um, in general, the exam terms are as follows. Um, there have to be two per semester. Um, as mentioned before, uh, it's usually the first three and last three weeks of the lecture free time. Uh, and then there is exam repetition in general. For every exam, you have three attempts. The last one has to be oral and has to be um, uh, taken by, th by two um, professors actually at faculty four. Um, you sh uh, it should be noted that uh, compulsory elective and elective modules can be exchanged, um, but you need to submit the corresponding form to the examination office before registering the replacement exam. There have been issues with this before, so just, just be aware that uh, this is at first possible and a, f a second um, 
there has been issues with this. Um, there is also something new. Um, you get one more attempt if you take part in a meeting with the student advisory service. We don't know how this works yet um, at faculty for, but uh, there is this uh, new paragraph uh, in the uh, Berliner Hochschulgesetz, the Berlin um, University law, essentially. Um, by the way, even without this extra attempt, uh, you should uh, go to the um, student advisory service before going into your last oral attempt because uh, this is really handy if you know what you're up to. Um, they can tell you about regulations, they can tell you about um, what happens, they can maybe even tell you about what the professor is like. Um, so go there if you ever uh, happen to need one. And one new thing, um, there are also three attempts for your thesis um, according to the new BRHG regulation. Um, yeah, just keep this in mind. And as a uh, corona compensation measure, there are also free retries at the moment. So right now, every exam you take, and not one per semester or one ever, or one pr per module, every um, failed attended examination attempt does not count at the moment. Um, probably until the end of the summer term 2022. It's not law right now um, because it has to be regulated via this uh, Berlin University law, but um, it's intended to be put again into force as it has been for the last four semesters. The requirements for this are you must attend. Um, so in the normal examination, you have to start it or in, an, uh, in presence examination, you have to go to the examination room and uh, sit down and have you yourself registered. Then you have, you must have failed. So you have, you need to have gotten a 5.0 or a fail. And this is important, you not, must not have been caught cheating because if you have been caught cheating, then this, all of this doesn't count. Um, yeah, you can, more, can find more information about this at the uh, website of the examination office, although the English version of this website is not very complete right now. Um, and as a final thing uh, that you need to keep in mind before the next semester starts, you have to re-register yourself. Um, this is done by usually just paying, paying a fee of about 308 euros, which includes your semester ticket, by the way. And uh, for the next winter term, which uh, is the next term you need to register for, re-register for. Um, you have to do this, um, you can do this without a penalty fee until the 22nd of July 2022, and with a penalty fee until the 30th of September 2022. So if you re-register re late, then you have to pay 19 euros and 94 cent extra. Yeah, it's, it's a bit unfortunate. Um, you can find all of this information at two port, um, where yeah you you'll have your uh, matriculation and re-registration information. So for example, if you you may also hand in extra documents for your re-registration. Um, yeah, and if if all of this is complete, then you get your um, your document that tells you. Um, that you have actually been successfully re-registered. By the way, um, as you've seen in this video, it can happen that this document doesn't load immediately and that you have to click it again. Just be aware of that. Um, it's a bit unfortunate and we're, I mean, we're a technical university, so we, we know how it should work, right? Um, by the way, um, you can find, uh, in Tuport, you can also find information on how to take, or on where you can take part in the academic self-administration elections, um, though, but those will um, happen again only in one and a half years. Um, but yeah, there is academic self-administration, and there are there's a form for that on which tells you where you you ca you're able to vote. And then it starts all over again. Um, yeah, this is one semester. Um, at U Berlin. Um, you can see it right here. We have your start of the semester where you should communicate. Um, then you have your lectures, your first portfolio examinations, 
then you should register for the, your written and oral examinations. Um, and <laughs> you should also re-register um, at best before the end of the lecture period, at least before the end of the semester, because otherwise you will be de-registered, which would be very unfortunate. And yeah, then you have your exam, um, the exam ex inspection, possibly the second exam period, and then um, it starts all over again for your third semester.